Hey guys, my name is Dakota Jenkins and I'm here to help you get things done. Today I'm going to show you how to use a multimeter. Okay, so starting off, we have the non-contact voltage detector. And if you flip it over there, you're going to get a reading of EF, which stands for electromagnetic force. And so what it does is if I hold this up to close to something that has a, you can see it's got static electricity too, um, it will sense that there is voltage going through there and you hear the beep. Um, so that one's really easy to use. Uh, the way that works is that when a conductor has currency going, or not currency, has current going through it, uh, it produces an electromagnetic field uh, around it. And so whenever you hold this up to it, it just senses that field. That's all that does. So the next thing you could do with a multimeter is check for alternating current voltage. Uh, so you go right here, you click over, and you see this is volt. It's got a little wavy line, and it's got HC, which stands for hertz. You can turn that light on, and you can see. Um, the really cool thing about this is when you're checking voltage, you can go right here to your washer and I'm going to just unplug it so we don't have anything. Uh, and you can check by putting both leads in there and turning slightly to the right. And you look and you've got 124 volts. Uh, so you've got the good volts there. And then if you go to the ground, you should have, let's see, 124 volts. So right there at 120 volts. So that means this plug is getting the right amount of volts. You want your standard receptacle to get 124 or 120 volts. Um, and then you come over here. Now, this is really cool because if you have a brand new dryer and say your dryer, it's brand new, nothing's wrong with it, but it's not heating. It turns on, it runs, but it doesn't heat. Well, the reason could be because you're not getting enough volts to it. You need a, a 240 volts to run a dryer unless it's a gas dryer. With your standard electric dryer, uh, if you come in here and look at this, you got to have 240 volts between both of these legs. Uh, and so if you take both of your testers here and you put them in there, and what do you get? 248.5. So that means we're getting the right volts there. Now if you were getting 120 or 124 or anywhere in there, that would mean one of your legs is not receiving power. So what I would do at that point um, before I replace this plug was I would go to my panel board and I would just make sure that my breakers were working properly. Now this is a double pole 30 amp breaker right here that's powering my dryer. So if I go to that, I go to both legs, these are both hot legs, and I've got 248 volts. So I know that there's nothing wrong with these breakers. I also know there's nothing long, wrong with this receptacle because I just got 240 again. So then I would say, if, if my dryer was not heating properly, I would go into it and I would say, well, then it's not hooked up. The cord on it is not hooked up properly uh, because somewhere along the line, it's not getting 240 volts. And so what you could do then is you could plug that in and you could check where your plug-in was. I'd also check before you plug it in just to see. The next thing you can do with a multimeter is direct current volts. So you go over here to this direct current, it's got a line and then little dots under it, and that's direct current. So say you've got a battery and you wanted to see if your battery was still good. Uh, so what you could do is you could take your positive lead here, is your red and your negative, and just put it on there. And this is supposed to read about 1.5 volts. So let's go ahead and test that out. And we got 1.56, 1.57. So this battery is still good. Um, and so that's a good way if you ever need to know, a lot of people will do this on a nine volt battery rather than a, a small AAA battery. But you know, you could even do it with this battery on your, for your drill or for your flashlight or whatever. And you got your positive and your negative. You see your positive, your negative terminals and you can just stick them in there. And we're reading 24.31 volts. And what does the side of that say? 24 volt max. So that means we're getting the voltage we're supposed to. This battery is still good. And that would, if, if this is malfunctioning, I know it's not the battery. I know it's this. The next thing you can do on your multimeter, we got volts. We got the non-contact voltage detector. We got uh, alternating and direct current volts. And then you can check your ohms, which is your resistance, which looks like an omega. 
then your dioid, which is a little line with an arrow. And, and a dioid, what that does is it allows current to only flow in one direction. That's a little bit more advanced. Maybe we'll talk about that in another video, how a dioid works. Uh, and then you got continuity. And now continuity is where I want to spend our time. So you get here on this and you hit mode and you see it's on dioid now and then it's on continuity. And what continuity means is that that piece of metal is still connected. Um, this is really good for checking uh, capacitors or for checking a thermostat or for checking uh, your heating element in a, um, in a water heater or checking anything like that just to make sure that there, there's still connection, there's still continuity between the two pieces without actually having to pull that out. Uh, and so what you, all you have to do with that is you just touch it on there and you're going to hear a loud sound. And that means there is continuity between this piece of metal because it's still touching. If you touch the leads together, you hear that there's continuity. Uh, and so that's how that works. Next thing you can do with this multimeter is you can take it and go to temperature. You take your little, this, this came with mine, you may have to get one, uh, but you got your positive, your negative, and you just plug that in. Your red is your positive, black is your negative. So plug that in like that. And you take this end and that, you put that wherever you need to read the temperature. Uh, and it will let you know whatever the temperature is. Right now we're reading, let's see, it's got a 64. That's just inside my hand and went up to 78, 79, 80, 81. Just getting hotter and hotter inside my finger there. Um, and then we can go down to Celsius and you can check that as well. And it's gonna start climbing. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Next cool thing you can do with a multimeter is you can check for amps. Uh, and if you don't know if you got less than 40 amps, just go to that 400 amp. Um, but I'm just gonna, I know that my dryer is only pulling on a 30 amp. So we're gonna put it on this 40 amp. And if I go around now, be very careful if you're doing this because these conductors right here are hot. Um, and I'm wearing, a, I'm gonna take my watch off actually. I'm wearing a rubber ring here so it's not metallic. Um, so I'm going to go around just one of these conductors. If you go around this one, you're not going to read anything because it's got two separate car current carrying conductors and then a neutral in there, um, which also can carry current back. Um, so I'm going to go around this right here very carefully without touching anything metal. And we're reading 0 0.01 amps because the dryer's not turned on. Now we turn the dryer on. Adrian, will you turn the dryer on? You see it's going to spike up there and start using some amps. The last really cool thing that this cobalt clamp on multimeter can do is if you hold this light right here, or this button right here, you get a nice light so you can see stuff. Thanks for watching. I hope y'all liked it. If you did, hit that like button, uh, subscribe and share it. And thank you very much.